know you was going to be here tonight, so the devil tells you that I'm picking on you. I didn't know you was going to be here tonight. I didn't know it was God. I believe Brother Jeremy's going to be here, Brother Naaman, and I ain't picking on you fellas or nothing like that. But the Lord knew you was going to be here is what I'm trying to say. And, uh, he knew what you needed, and I don't know what you're going through. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll try to get over to our message in just a few minutes, and I'm just going to say this just so we can kind of reference over to uh, to our to our scripture right here on our, our, our message. But uh, maybe my dad, he uh, he was a real big, healthy-looking fellow, and uh, he looked like he was uh, just just pretty good shape. And uh, inside, inside his body was deteriorating, and there was things in his body was breaking down. But on the outside, he looked like he was in pretty good health. And tonight, you might look like you're doing pretty good spiritually, but inside, they might be something that's trying to eat at you, trying to slow you down. And I just want to say that before we're getting ready to read, but uh, I ain't got nothing new. Like I said, uh, you probably heard this scripture uh, quite often, but if you'd like to read along, we're going to be in the 15th chapter of Luke tonight. And uh, we'll try to we'll try to preach this as the Lord gave it to us, and uh, want you to be lifted up, want you to be encouraged. We're glad you're here tonight. Uh, some of you ain't seen in a while, and, and we're glad you're here tonight. Uh, but the Lord knows exactly what you're going through and what's going on with your life. Uh, hope you've got right there. We're uh, 15 chapter of Saint Luke. We're going to be reading verses 11 through 17. No doubt most of you've heard this, uh, but uh, start at the 11th verse. And it said in a certain, I'm going to start all over, 11th verse, and he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto him, unto them his living. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance, and his living. When he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed, feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he had came to himself, he said, How many hired servants my fathers have bread enough to spare? Perish with hunger. Appreciate you standing for the reading of the word. Uh, we've heard this many a time. Uh, the father had uh, had what he had. He was going to divide it with his children. And uh, sometimes we'll find ourselves wanting to be that younger son. Sometimes we'll find ourselves thinking that we've got it figured out a little bit more brilliantly than maybe our neighbor does. Sometimes we'll think we've got it just a little bit more figured out than maybe what the preacher does. Sometimes we'll think that the preacher's been mean to us or the pastor's been mean to us because he wants you to be at church, but he's he's concerned about your soul. He's concerned about what what the devil's want to do to you. And if we for a few minutes, if I could title this tonight, this is direction, feel like we're going to try to go the danger of running on fumes. <laughs> the danger of running on fumes. Uh, no doubt if you'd have pulled this young man to the side, no doubt he would have never said, there ain't no way I'm going to spend all my money. <laughs> there ain't no way I'm going to go down there and you have right of living and I'm going to waste it all. <laughs> Maybe you're sitting here tonight like your brother Greg. <laughs> there ain't no way that I'm going to do that. <laughs> there ain't no way that I'm going to throw this all away. <laughs> Well, I tell you, the Lord put this on my heart, and we didn't know who was going to be here. So there's danger in running on fumes. And the preacher gets up, and he said, you ought to be at church tonight. You ought to be at service next prayer meeting service. He ain't trying to be mean to you. He's trying to encourage you. Look at this father pulled him to the side and said, now, son, I'm going to give you what's coming to you. I'm going to give you your part. And no doubt that boy's mind, he maybe thought, I'm going to save it. Just pray for me a few minutes. We'll try not to be up too the Lord wants us to be up. But no doubt, maybe that father might have talked to him. Maybe sometimes the, the preacher will come right down your road and he'll tell you just where you're living. And it ain't the preacher, it's God. It's Jesus moving through the preacher that comes right down your road. And you're thinking, there ain't no way he knows. That. I don't want to know what's going on in your life. I am here to stoop and to know none of these things. But there's danger in running on fumes. There's danger in thinking, well, that preacher, don't, he ain't got to figure it out. I tell you, without the Lord's help, without the Holy Ghost coming on the scene, I, I couldn't even even begin to try to preach. But when the Holy Ghost comes on the scene, and He starts getting right there where He at. The danger of running on fumes. 
Brother Greg, we're, we're doing just fine. We're supposed to be getting lifted up this week. We're supposed to be encouraged. To. Well, I'll tell you, if we start turning a deaf ear to the preacher, if we start saying, oh, oh he's just an old bogey. Oh. Brother Jeremy Thank just wants us to come yeah. out so we can have a big crowd. Oh, oh, he's concerned about your soul. Yeah. Yeah. He's concerned about you running out of fuel. He's concerned about you getting to the spot. Yeah. Yeah. In verse 13, it said he wasted his substance. Uh, yeah. How often have we came out of here and, and you know it good and well that God's gave you a testimony. And you know it good and well that God's done something. I'm going shut it up. You know that God's done something for you and you sit there and the devil said, I don't want to hear what you got to say. You done gave that testimony and you done shared that. The devil's trying to get you to be running on fumes. The devil's trying to get you to that point where you're thinking, Nobody likes me. My brother don't like me. My sister don't like me. It's been happening in this scripture right here. Verse 14. He said he spent all. Have you ever been at that spot where you think it just, just seemed like money in, in the natural just, just goes? You just go right through it like it's water. It just goes and goes. And when the devil starts stealing from you, when he takes your testimony, when he takes your song, when he takes it, I don't believe he is, but when he takes your message, when he takes your message, and you're thinking, oh, that ain't going to matter none. Let me tell you, when you get to that spot, where we're starting to want to run on fumes. And in the natural, if you've ever tried to run a vehicle, on fumes, you will be found stranded. Yeah. And this guy yeah. found himself, this younger son found himself. Yeah. He went, verse 50 said, he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him out to the fields to feed swine. The devil would love to take your life and just try to wreck it. Yeah. The devil would love to take your life and say, there ain't no use for you. There ain't no good for you. You ain't no good. That's the devil lying to you. Because we have a man that died on a cross yeah. a bunch of years ago. And they put him up there and he went into the tomb. And the tomb couldn't hold him. And he come back to life. And he loves you and he died for your sins. And, yeah. and we sit here and I just want to run on fumes. But there's danger of running on fumes. I don't know. In my mind, I picture that this man had a, the, the daddy, the, the, the senior person, he had a lot of money to go through. And that young one probably thought, man, I'm going to be able just to just to, just pray for me a few minutes. I, I feel like this is where we need to be at. But I'm telling you, the, the danger of running on fumes, the danger of thinking, man, that preacher just harping at me. He's got my number. Man, I want you to go to heaven. I want you. I, I love education, and, and I, I'm all for education. But if it's tr between you having the education or you having the Lord in your life, I want you to have the Lord in your life. If it's between you and going to heaven or going to hell, I want you to go to heaven. But if we get to that spot where we think, oh, I got this figured out. And there's been a time or two that, that Greg thought he had it figured out. I've got to provide, Lord. I've got to provide. Scripture tells me to provide. Yeah, I do have to provide. Him. But when it interferes with God's work, God's going to provide. God's going to take care of that. You say, Brother Greg, I don't know about that. I'm Oh, and if we ain't careful, sometimes I didn't read it, but in that same passage, the older brother, he had that running on fumes too. That jealousy came out of him. That jealousy, oh, look what, look what he's doing. Brother Justin, I don't know what's going on in your life, but I hope the Lord's blessed it. I hope if you're looking for a new vehicle, He gives you one. If you need whatever you need, I hope He gets it. And I don't want to have a jealous bone about that. I don't want to have a jealous bone about what's going on, Brother Justin. Look at there. Look how He's a prayer. Lord, pour it on Him. Lord, pour it on Him. Lord, pour it on Him because you know the devil. That's just as good as the devil. On the porch. That's the way I see it. Out there, kind of running on fumes on the other side. He hadn't spent his living. He told his dad, he said, Father, you ain't had me no fatty calf. Father, you ain't had me no party. The danger of running on fumes. Several years ago, I had a little car. Man, I thought I was getting me some gas mileage in that car. Man, I wasn't having to fill up. And it was showing a quarter of a tank. Man. So this, this tank right here is just uh, going. We're getting some good gas mileage here. Only for me to find out. It's me. My dad was actually still living and he was with me. 
as we turned the curb and the car didn't want to go no more, it had ran out of gas. It had been running on fumes. And you know what had happened? My little fuel indicator had broken. The thing that told me how much fuel I had. You know, you might be looking over and watching your neighbor. Well, I'm doing as good as I ain't meaning up by this. I'm doing as good as Brother David's doing. I'm all right and I don't think you'll get hurt at me. I'm doing as good as Brother Jeremy and I don't mean nothing by that. And you're in to take yourself off what you're watching. Is that you know what's going on? The danger of running on fumes. Brother Greg, it's like for me. I'm not sure. Let me tell you a little bit. This message is for Greg. This message is going to me. The danger of running on fumes. The danger of not paying off. Young man thought he was never going to run out of right. money. Okay, Verse 13, I've done said it, but he wasted his substance. Verse 14, he said he spent all. Verse 15, he joined himself. Verse 16, he said that he was hungry. And in verse 17, he said he came to himself. But right, it's Tuesday on Revival. We want to get pumped up. Let me tell you something. You stay on them fumes and you sit there and think, boy, I, my indicator says I'm, I'm on about a quarter of a tank. I'll be all right. You better go ahead and just get that filled up. You better go ahead and just say, Lord, I want what you got for me tonight. Lord, I want you to encourage me tonight. Lord, I want my spiritual cup to be overflowing. The danger of running on fumes. There I was thinking I was getting good gas mileage. Yeah. Only to come to find out oh, I was getting ready to be walking. Yeah. Only to find out if we fall and we hit chalk with the devil, let me tell you, he's going to tell you it's going to be just perfect. He's going to tell you, look over here, look how good this is over here. Look how good this is over here. I've told it, I've been here before, but if you take these old canvas paintings and you look at the front of them, and man, they're just, some of them are just beautiful. This artist taking paint new, but if you was to walk around it behind there, they usually don't even finish the back. It's the rough part of the the, the wood that they've used. It's the rough part of the canvas. It's the bleed through of the paint. And that's what the devil ain't showing you. It's the back part of the picture that he's trying to show you. That's going to be all good. That's going to be all good. But I was at Toyota and he was saying, there ain't no need in you leaving this place. You've got it, mate. You've got to do this. You've got to do this. And the whole time I was starting to run on fumes. Brother Greg, you ain't got to get on that. Let me tell you. You better you walk away from your job. You better be dependent on something. Oh, Happy I guess I jumped out of there a little further. That's all right. I've been here before. When we jump out for the Lord, when we step out for the Lord, Lord, I don't know what you're gonna do, but I'm believing you're gonna do it. Not that I'm anything great, but I'm telling you, about seven years ago, I was running on fumes. I've been taken to church all my life. I've been drugged to church, however you want to say it, all my life. From an infant, from a baby, taken all my life. My dad was a deacon on the board. He knew how important it was for me to be there. And here I felt myself running on fumes. What's it like, Brother Greg? Well, your desire to go to church is pretty much none. Your concern for folks at church is pretty much none. Oh, yeah. Things are gonna tip you off real easy. Right. We're trying to preach on the danger of running on fumes. Because once we get to that spot yeah. and we don't realize we're there, we're there. He was there feeding the hogs, yeah. feeding the swine. Yeah. How'd I get here? How'd I get here? Yeah. I preached to that brother right there a long time, and I know that brother right there will preach you the truth. I believe that the nights I ain't here that he's preaching, he's preaching you the truth. When he's recommending and suggesting and, and asking you to please get, dig in, get in, come on, show up. He ain't trying to just have something to say. He's talking about the danger of you running on fumes. And sometimes we don't see it as individuals. Brother Jacob, sometimes we don't see it as individuals. This younger son, he'd spin all. 
I don't know how much he spent, but I want to think it was in today's time thousands. I don't think it was twenty or thirty dollars. I think it was thousands, thousands of dollars he wasted. He went through. You came in tonight, and that song that the Lord was bidding you to sing. Sing that, Lord. Somebody else can sing better than me. That testimony, somebody else can, can testify better than me. What if Zach was to show up and Brother Mason was to show up and say, you know what? Tonight I just ain't going to play the drums. Tonight I just don't really feel like playing the drums. There's not that these boys come in, these young men, and no doubt they're tired, they wore out, they don't feel like doing it. But the danger. The rain of beauties. The danger of the service not going over. The danger of saying, man, let somebody else do it. 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 The danger of running on beauties. I ain't here to try to pick on you. I didn't know you was going to be here. That's the reason I started it out. Well, I started it felt like that was the way to do it. Lord knew you was going to be here. Lord knows your heart. Lord knows the intent. Lord knows how you can help somebody. I believe it was just today. I believe it was just today, Brother Brindley. I was thinking, it had been so long since I've I, I known Brindley for a long time. Uh, and had seen him a long time. And not this, this past year, but the year before, when Brother Jason Downey was down at Whitehall, I got home and I told uh, Leslie, I said, man, there's a guy, he was stirred up in there. He fired up. I apologize, I, I didn't, at that time, I, I'm like, uh, he looks familiar, but I'm horrible with names. <laughs> when I come to find out, she's like, that's Ridley? <laughs> you know Ridley? Yeah. That's Ridley? Yeah. That's Ridley? Yeah. Right. I mean, the Lord done something for him and he don't care to share yeah. that. But if we ain't careful, we'll get to that spot and we'll say everybody's heard that testimony. Nobody cares. They don't want to hear about this. And we start running on fumes. We start saying, hey, who cares about us? And your testimony is your testimony. I can't give your testimony in. We can spin off. And he came to himself. How many hired servants of my father's house have bread enough and to spare and I'll perish with hunger? Have you got the spiritual blessing you'd like to get tonight? Or, or, or I don't really like to rate the service how good it is, how bad it is. You know what I mean? is how enjoyable. But, but as Brother Brian Smith's daddy told him that dry service they went to, he said, Dad, that was awful dry service. And he asked him two or three times about that third time. Brother Raymond Smith said, well, son, what did you do basically to contribute to, to the service to make it a little bit more spiritual? Maybe you're, maybe you're at that spot where you're putting that pretty smile on and you come in and your sleeves are just right. Your hair cuts just right. You're just doing everything just right. But you're running on fumes. You're at that spot where you're thinking, Lord, I ain't going to get through this battle. I'm all shut up. Lord, we get to that spot. Us dads, it's a little bit different, but, but these moms, and want to go, I heard that cry, that, that new baby, and like, oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And the thing of it is, when we come out here to church most of the time, I'm just going to kind of throw us brothers up above us here just for a little bit, and then lift up these sisters, but they take care of these youngins, and they make sure that they're taken care of, and they're fed, and they're, they're this, and they're that, and they're they're watched over, and they don't have got a burden to take care of that child, but you know what? There's times that mama's going to run on fumes too. There's times that mom needs just a little bit of lifting up, and they might be an elder sister in the church, or maybe dad could grab the baby and let that mama walk right around through, let that sister walk right around through, and say, Lord, I'm ready I'm not that I want to give up. Not that I want to quit. But I tell you, you have a load to pay. We've got three children, and my wife takes care of those three children. And I know that they're taken care of. But I know that there, there's a load to be packed with that. Because she's tending to those. She's taking care of those. And you need to get spiritual. I didn't know I was going to take care of The danger of running on the 
When I was a young boy, and that, that elder preacher would get up and say, you need to be out here telling some more. I'd say, man, I like to be home swinging. I like to be home playing in the yard, playing kickball. I like to be home playing with Tony. I was a kid. Right. Yeah. As I get a little older, I was to miss a service or two, and I see what that preacher was talking about. Yeah. You need to get out there. I'll tell you what, Sister Kendra, Joy, that song was soft. If everybody come out here, and I ain't picking on none of us because I sometimes sing, but if we get singing like that, I don't think she seen mom and daddy around. She didn't see nobody else, but she was singing to the Lord. Yeah. She was singing to Jesus, Lord, I thank you, Lord. Lord, I praise you, Lord. And when we start doing that, we start feeling like we're kind of We're trying to preach on the thought of danger running on fumes. Running on fumes. Brother Greg, I ain't got a testimony like someone so. Brother Greg, uh, I ain't been no car wreck, and the Lord will pull me out with the jaws of life, and, and they had to rush me to the hospital and give me 10 pints of blood and, and all these things. Well, you still have a testimony. Thank you, Lord, that I wasn't in a wreck. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, that I didn't have to give me no blood transfusion. Thank you, Lord, my family didn't have to worry. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. And when you start getting that mindset, I'm telling you, somebody's watching you. Somebody's seeing how you're handling something. And I want you to get to where you ain't running on fumes. I want you to get where you say, Lord, I think I'm going to get through this. It's been all we had. Over a second, Peter. Man, I, we're happy to be here tonight. We're happy to be here tonight. Maybe someone was talking. We don't know how long we'll have this freedom. We don't know how long we'll get a gather out like this. And I ain't trying to be negative. But we're able to be out here tonight. We're able to come out here tonight. There, there's forces in this world that do not love the Lord. There's forces in this world that, that need the Lord. There's forces in this world that if they can sit in a service just like this and the Lord prick their heart, the Lord touch their heart, they can be changed like we've been changed. They can be turned around like we've been turned around. But until that happens, they don't love the Lord. In 2 Peter, uh, uh, verse chapter, verses 5 through 10, uh, how can we not be running on views? Verse 5 said, Beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Yeah. And to your virtue, knowledge. And to your knowledge, temperance. And your temperance, patience. And your patience, godliness. We're talking about adding right here. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Verse 10, Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Oh. I believe we can make it. Yeah. I don't believe we have to run on fumes. I don't believe we have to come out here and say, well, we just had just another service and we just, just didn't get along as good as we did. Y'all y'all been around me long enough. I like to see just whoo, right, running high. Good running high. Right, I don't like to, uh, when you have a slow time, yeah. give us part of the devil yeah. to try to come in and sow yeah. so this going. Right. You look over and you see somebody frowning. Every morning. Why are they yeah. I see something. Yeah. You sing a song and they didn't stand up. Yeah. Oh, or they didn't stand up on song. Yeah. Or as the preacher's up, you didn't say amen to anything I said. Yeah. And everybody's going to be all over. I'm just going <laughs> to. You ain't got to say amen if you don't. Yeah. don't, don't I don't mean that. The danger of running on fumes. I'm going to tempt this. They sing this song about the church of the light. I'm going to try it. <coughs> he said, Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. 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 Let it rain.
But you get to that spot where you want the floodgates of heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Where you want the Lord just to really just work. <laughs> As we have to grow in this, man, I tell you, growing pains are hard. And I've heard different people say it. When I first come to know the Lord, I looked around and, man, everybody looked good. And I didn't see nobody cheat the system and I thought everybody was just doing what I was doing, just trying to live for God and go and do. And as you go along, you're thinking, man, why ain't they going and doing like that? And the devil starts showing you things and start just cause you to hope we get this spot. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. I wrote this down because I, I knew I wouldn't remember. He said, Lord. We need you, Lord. Leslie, can you try to sing it? I ain't getting the right thing. <laughs> we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain.
Lord knows what you're going through tonight. Right. You can sit there and smile at me and act like everything's fine. Say, preacher, you missed it. Preacher, you missed it. Several years ago, I seen a, I seen a preacher go and get a young man, and the young man act like he done had it all figured out, and he shrugged it off. And today, when I see that young man, I don't believe that he's got the Lord, and it ain't for me to decide. But I'm telling you, it's so serious. Because if we say, Lord, I don't need you, Lord. Lord, I don't need you, Lord. I'm telling you, when you're on fumes, and you get to the end of that fumes, and you run out, you're going to be dry. You've heard the story before about the little girl. And she had a daddy, and the daddy was real rich. And the little girl, she would go to church, and she would uh, try to do right. And she'd come home and say, Daddy, please go to church with me. Please go with me, Daddy. Go to church with me. And he was putting it off, so there ain't nothing to all that. That ain't nothing but just, just, just wasting your time. And he got that little girl convinced and talked to the spot where she didn't believe. And she came down sick. So this man had acres and acres and acres of land. And the little girl was in the hospital. And she had then turned away the Lord. And the dad already had had nothing to do with the Lord. And he got in there and she said, Daddy. She was laying in that hospital bed. She said, Daddy, please. My feet are on fire. Please, Daddy, help this fire that's on my feet. There's a time that we can get to a spot where I tell you what, the, the, the fumes would have been something we'd like to have. I don't know why we're here. But I tell you, if you're thinking about turning back, if you're thinking, well, I'm too far indeed to get back to the other side, that little girl sitting there screaming, and there was nothing her daddy could do. All that he had, he probably no doubt would exchange it for that little girl's healing. No doubt. If we turn, I don't know where you come. Oh, glory. You all look good to me tonight. But the Lord knows your heart. You ain't going to stand before me. It ain't going to be me there on your panel. It's going to be the Lord. And when you sit there say, well. I've struggled off before, Brother Naaman. I've passed it all time before. Running on fumes. And there come a day where I had to decide. I couldn't imagine my little children looking up at me. So, Daddy, I wish. I wish you'd have told me the truth, Daddy. I wish you'd have told me the truth, Daddy. Because I tell you, we're all going somewhere. You're running on fumes. The remedy is you get out of all those things. You shall never fall. Gregor, are you serious? I'm not going to lie to you. No. You had all that brotherly kindness. I can read it again there if you need me to. Turn there in 2 Peter. When you add all those things and you do those things, it's just going to We better have this and we want this. We're going to heaven. Is there getting ready to sing? Or are going to go? Is there getting ready to sing? Lord, won't you open the floodgates of heaven tonight? Lord, won't you open the floodgates of heaven? Brother Greg, uh, just don't shout. Brother Greg, uh, just... Uh, that ain't my thing. I had a... We'll try to say this in soon try to close. I had somebody at church a few years ago. And I felt real strong and compelled to invite them. And I called them and asked them. And they told me it just really wasn't that thing. And I see that individual from time to time. You can see an emptiness. You can see a void right there in that life. You can see a, they need something right there in that life. Well, tonight you're right here at the church house. The people to your left and right, they love you. The people that's in front of you and behind you, they don't care if you be who and you go through a box of Kleenexes. If they do, if you do, I believe some of them will get you another box. If you can just give just a touch. Don't let the devil say, oh, everybody's looking at you. Look here. If we was burning in torment, we'd be screaming for everything in us. Jordan ain't nothing going to be able to switch nothing that you don't want to change us for. I told him just uh, we was invited to another place to preach. This past July, I've had like 25 years out there. And I had it made in the natural. I'd had it made. 
they done this and they done that for me. If you don't fight for the devil, I ain't got it. Let me just put this, let me just put this little thought and you take his home, think of it. But you ain't got something that you want. And for a reference, I want to say a guitar. That way nobody gets mad. But when you see a guitar that you like and you, and you ain't got it and you want to obtain it, what do you do? You try to obtain it. When the devil doesn't have you, who am I shut up? The devil wants you to go to hell. The devil wants you to go to torment. The devil wants you to wake up in misery. So when he's after you, it should be easy to pray. It's been easy to preach tonight with the Lord's help. Run on views. Brother Brandon, we can't run on views. But John, we can't run on fumes. Because one day, just like that little car, I can about take you to the spot where we broke down. And here's how much that the Lord loved us, or loved me, or I feel like he did. When we broke down, we was on Main Street, on 2nd Street, where now is the annex to the courthouse. It used to be an old building, and it was a convenience store right there beside it. If you've ever been in Richmond. That's where it was at. And we coasted down the hill and coasted right in to the gas station. Right. It ain't coincidence that you're here tonight. It ain't coincidence that this is a scripture that ain't. I, I've had this on, on my heart for a while. I mean, it ain't like we've been in different places. I didn't feel like this is where I, I felt like this is where I need to preach this message. Oh, yeah. The danger of running on funerals is they're starting to play and get ready for the summer. You know how it is with you and the Lord. You ain't got to convince me. Like I said, my, in my eyes, it's a wonderful looking crowd tonight. In my eyes, I, I hope that you've got everything taken care of. But down in your heart, you know. About seven years ago when I sat back here on this very platform, and I was playing that five-string bass guitar, and I was teaching Sunday school, and I was digging on the board, and I was running on fumes. Brother Ray, yeah, running on fumes. Devil had my number. He zeroed in on me. He targeted in on me, and he about had me. And it was decision making time. Brother Greg, you can't live without Toyota. So and so, you can't live without this in your life. So and so, you can't keep from doing this in your life. As you're running on fumes, you've got to make that decision. I didn't mean to bring it down to a low. I know it's only Tuesday, so hopefully somebody else will preach you had. This is what I felt like we needed tonight. The danger of running on pews. You like the sound of those little babies crying? That sound won't be that like a torment. You like the sound, Sister Kendra, while we go singing that song, getting excited? You won't be hearing those kind of sounds down there in that place of torment. That water fountain over there, if it's got water coming out of it, there won't be no water fountain over on that other city. There won't be no way to get you a drink. Brother Greg, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Because if so, that rich man went over and got him a drink. He said, want to drip. The danger of running on fumes. As I started out, and I'm so trying to close my dream. My dad would walk in and he'd have a smile. Nobody knew that he had been on, on dialysis and they'd been running his blood through the machine and, and they'd been trying to clean the, the, the bad stuff out of his body so he could keep on living. Nobody knew and seen all that because he kind of went smiling. But see, I was just a little young boy and I seen behind the scenes when he couldn't even, he played a little guitar and he'd pack his guitar to church and he'd pack it home with him and other just the way he done it. And I seen those nights when he couldn't even pack his guitar with the case. And I seen the nights that he'd come in and it's just, just hard to do to get there. Now he wasn't playing. He wasn't joking around. He wasn't trying to just live on fumes because when I get home from work at two and three in the morning, when I'd get off work, I wasn't out running around when I'd get home, I'd walk in and I'd look up there and there'd be sitting at his dad at his recliner, reading his Bible, trying at two and three o'clock in the morning. 
because he didn't want to be on fumes. He didn't want to be running on fumes. So, Brother Greg, what's that got to do? We've got to make it. We've got to make it. It's 2022. People don't live like that no more. When I hear a preacher get up and talk about how hell enlarges herself, or can I help that one individual? The danger of running on fumes. That young man, I'll talk to us in college, and I'm trying. But that young man in the scripture reading we had, he probably thought that money was always going to last. He probably thought he was always going to have them buddies. And sometimes if you've got a little money, you might have some buddies. But when the money runs out, the buddies run out. I'm going to close. I appreciate God. I appreciate Jess. This is to preach. I, 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 I didn't try to come across you. I didn't try to come and put you down. But I'm telling you, if we get to that spot where we're running on views and we think we can handle it ourselves, the devil's chasing you and you're not able to outrun him. You're not able to outrun the devil. Right. See, he, 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 he tempted our, our Savior. He said when the Lord was, was gone away and fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he keeps coming and trying to hurry. Yeah. When he had been fasting 40 days and 40 nights, the devil came and tempted our Savior. And he, and he promised him all these things. And we think that we're going to be able to stand against the devil. He will overpower us. If they get ready to sing this song, the danger of running on fumes. You, you ain't got to try to prove, prove one on Greg. You ain't got to try to, well, I'll do it next time. But when the Lord bids you, that's when you got to do it. As they're getting ready, if you feel like it, this altar's open. You know how it is with you. Go ahead and sing your song. This altar's open.